Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. Uh, so on my blog, I share how I made my fortune in real estate starting at 19 years old, millionaire by 28. Uh, and that was a long time ago. Uh, I wrote a book, uh, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. Uh, I'll show you this book. Uh, and on my blog here, what I do is I share with you it pretty much just, uh, uh, that's my book right there, uh, how, how I did it and how I've been doing it, uh, you know, for the last really almost 40 years now. And uh, I also have mentorship I do periodically. Uh, nothing going at the moment, but we're starting something soon again. Uh, you can check that out at flipanythingusa.com. But look, today we're going to talk about scammers because there's a lot of scammers in snake oil. And uh, I thought I saw this video on uh, Bigger Pockets and, uh, I th uh, you know, on the YouTube channel that they have. And I thought, hey, let, let's take a look at that. So hang on for that. All right, so this, uh, this video here, uh, let me pull it up. It's, uh, this is Bigger Pockets. If you're not familiar, they have a, they're kind of a mall. I mean, I call them a mall. They're like a mall of information where you can, I don't know if it's all good, and I don't know that it's all bad either, but I do know that uh, uh, they started out, Supposedly, the story is looking for information, and they wanted a place where they could, you know, get information on real estate, and now there's a lot of information in one spot that is there by paid sponsors, and so paid sponsors don't necessarily mean quality. It just means people, you know, selling their stuff. So, again, you know, buyer beware on any of that sort of thing, but so let's watch this. Let's watch this deal with uh, Brandon. Uh, let's see who we got here with us today. Thanks for... Hey, hey, Delia, glad you're here. Uh, let me get in here. All right. All right. Uh, it's been a long day, and uh, we can talk about anything you guys want. But let's, let's go ahead and get through this here first. Okay, what do we got here? Thousand dollars to look. All right, here we go. The other day I was driving my car, listening to the radio, and an ad came on talking about a certain popular real estate investor who was coming to town to teach a free seminar about building wealth through real estate. 100% free to attend, the advertisement said. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard these ads on the radio, or maybe you've seen ads pop up on your Facebook or on your Instagram feed or before a YouTube video. So, what's the deal with these? Well, it's a really common and effective way for these real estate investor educators to make a lot of money. I'm Brandon Turner from BiggerPockets.com, and in this video, I'm gonna break open the secret world of real estate education and explain when you shouldn't and when you should maybe pay for real estate education. So, I'm kind of glad to see this, that they acknowledge that there's scammers out there, to be honest, because a lot of people don't. And some people are conflicted in revealing that there's scammers or talking bad about one person or another uh, because, <laughs> because you know, uh, thieves can't tell on each other, right? <laughs> because they just can't. And uh, so they don't call each other out. So I'm kind of glad that he's pointing this out. Of course, this seminar he's pointing out. It's not particularly a, a YouTuber that I can see. But uh, I think I know who he's talking about, too. So uh, let's let's keep watching this. Oh, turn up the mic a bit? Is that right? Oh, boy. Maybe I'm just not close enough. All right, we'll see what we got. How's that? I think that's probably a little better. Okay. Hey, Robert, how you doing? All right. So I thought we'd watch this just because it's on the subject of scammers. And uh, and I think he's talking about Than Merrill, to be quite honest. But uh, I've heard a lot of bad stuff about Than Merrill. But we'll get into that. I have no idea for sure. But let's let's take a look. And I got it running at about one and a quarter speed. He actually talks fairly fast, so I don't have to crank it up quite, quite so much. Effective way for these real estate investor educators to make a lot of money. I'm Brandon Turner from BiggerPockets.com, and in this video, I'm going to break open the secret world of real estate education and explain when you shouldn't and when you should maybe pay for real estate education. All 
right, so here's how this guru trap, as we like to call it, works. First, you get invited to one of these free seminars. Almost all the time, the real estate celebrity whose face was all over the advertisement won't actually be there, just some sales guy who's on stage who's really, really, really good at selling. Now keep in mind, they are actually teaching how to invest in real estate at these seminars, but they're usually showing you what's possible. They want you to get a thirst for a better life. They know all the right buttons to press, all the right emotions to tweak, and the psychological tricks to get you to do one simple thing. Sign up for the next level of education, which is usually in the form of a weekend boot camp for a semi-reasonable price, usually like a few hundred bucks. This, for the real estate educator, is really a way to filter all those out who don't have the funds to make a larger purchase, which is what the weekend boot camp is usually about. So you go to the weekend boot camp, and then you'll likely learn a little bit more, but more of that event is just focused on the next upsell, usually a 20 or 30 or 50,000, even $100,000 coaching or education platform that they have. And let me tell you, they are really, really good at getting people to pay those kinds of money. That kind of money? Those kind of money? Now, is any of this wrong? Well, not necessarily. I know a number of investors who have become successful after paying a hefty amount for coaching and training. But I also know many more who have succeeded wildly without the help of that guru crowd. What drives me nuts is the number of individuals I hear from who spent that 30 or that 50 or $100,000 to learn how to invest, and then they discover that the information they learn is already out there, usually for free, or you might pay for a book or a podcast or have to do a Google search. Like some of these individuals. So I'll speak to that in just a little bit. Listen, there's a ton of information out there. The problem is a lot of people don't know if it's good or not because a lot of times they don't, they want to hear it from a person that's actually done it. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people, it's theory to them. And it's not the same. When you learn something from somebody that doesn't know it, that hasn't done it, it's not the same quality, I can tell you right now. Because it's not firsthand. It's not firsthand knowledge. And it, they really can't even answer a lot of the difficult questions. So they can say, oh, yeah, it's great. You know, this is how you do it. You ever done it? Uh, well, no. <laughs> well, they don't even admit to it. And But I think the, the scams he's talking about are very real. I know people that have been ripped off. And, and believe me, they... They've got a tier level for ripping people off. And I'm talking about you go in there to the free seminar and they figure out, okay, how many people are really serious about making money, you know, and people raise their hands. And how many people, how many people are willing to spend 30 grand to really make a lot of money and then hands go up. And when they start, you know, they start picking out and they go, okay, these guys got 30 grand, these guys got 20, these guys got 10, these guys got five grand, these people got 1,200. And they go, they got your number. I mean, listen. They didn't invite you in for a three free seminar. You are the target. You are the money. Okay. It's like when you don't know who the sucker in the room is, it means it's you. And believe me, it is suckers that go in there and they just get fleeced. It's a uh, common it happens all the time. I actually intended to go to one of those seminars that was here uh, recently, uh, you know, in, in my town and I, I just didn't have time. I wish I would have gone now, but I, I just couldn't make time for it. But again, so let's keep watching uh, Brandon here. I got it running at about, you know, one and a quarter speed, and, and this isn't very long. We're pressured into putting this expensive training onto credit cards, like even being pushed to negotiate with their credit card companies to raise their credit card limits. It's an investment in your future, the guru says, and sure, it could be, right? But here's the thing. I've noticed this over and over. Every single person that I know who succeeded with the help of some expensive training, I believe they would have done so without that training. They just have the mindset and the work ethic to make it happen anyway. And those who I know who haven't paid for education and they've not found success, no amount of coaching or expensive training was gonna help them, right? And here's the real kicker. Something that might make you a little uncomfortable to hear. You ready for this? I believe most people who pay for expensive coaching and training do so because it makes them feel like they're taking action. It makes them feel like they're making progress. It makes them feel like they're getting closer to their goal, but usually they're going backwards. In other words, expensive real estate education is nothing but an excuse not to take action. So here- Yeah, and you know, people do do that. They, they associate quality to price, right? We all do to a degree, right? You go out, you go to a, you go to a nice steakhouse, more expensive the steak, and usually it's true. The better, of course, a restaurant, local restaurant, is not going to last if it doesn't have quality food. But again, when you're dealing with uh, real estate scammers and they have got a big price on it, they get you caught up in the lifestyle. And it's not exclusive to seminars, right? They do it on YouTube channels all the time. I mean. Uh, I Chris Crone's somebody that I, you know, every time I see him, he's kind of like, look at the balloons, look at my car. But let's not talk about details, links below. And, uh, and you know, the, I've got a lot of emails from people talking about Chris Crone. And they say, yeah, I, I paid him a thousand bucks of the 5,000 and I bailed on him, you know, and, and there's no getting the money back. And, you know, but again, 
you know, and we'll look at some other stuff here. Again, you got to do your due diligence. You know, you got to look at what you're doing and what he's saying about people spend money and they just associate the, you know, they just, I don't know if it's because they want to, they don't want to take responsibility, right? To a degree. They'll, they'll pay big bucks, but it's like they're associating quality with the price they're paying. And that's a mistake. You got to do your due diligence. You got to check out credentials. Uh, but let's keep watching. Hey, uh, Keith, glad you're here. Chris, you too. And uh, we'll keep going. Here. Here's my challenge to you. If you've got a lot of credit card debt, you're struggling financially, do not pay for expensive coaching and training. Instead, prove to yourself that you have what it takes by taking real action. So grab a pen and write these six things down. Number one, listen to 100 episodes of a real estate podcast. Obviously, I'd recommend the Bigger Pockets podcast because of the incredibly handsome and talented host. Um, and there's also like 7,000 plus five star reviews and 60 million downloads. But literally, there's a ton of great real estate shows out there. So listen to something, 100 episodes. Number two, read 15 real estate investing books, minimum. Number three, engage in at least 100 conversations over on the Bigger Pockets forums. It's free. Number four, take a dozen real estate investors out to lunch or coffee over the next few months. Not altogether, that'd be weird. Number five, analyze 100 real estate deals, walk through a dozen open houses, and attend at least three real estate meetups in your area. And number six, be sure you are living responsibly by spending 70% of or less of what you earn. Cut your expenses, kill your Netflix if you have to. Whoa, after all that, if you still think you need coaching and training and you have the money in cash, not credit, then sure, go for it, you know? But you're probably thinking, that's gonna take a long time, Brandon, to do all those things. Now you're getting it. Real estate investing takes work. It takes passion. It takes persistence. And it takes time. You do the things, the six things I just mentioned, and then I'll believe that you've got what it takes to actually succeed. Now, that's not to say coaching and training doesn't have a place in the industry or in your future. Like, look, even Tiger Woods, arguably the best golfer in the world, has a golf coach. Coaches or mentors can be incredibly helpful in answering questions, allowing someone to really break through mental barriers, uh, hold each other accountable to action steps or even like work alongside you on a deal and some of these individuals are very knowledgeable and there are plenty of stories of people out there who have paid money to a coach or a paid mentor and found incredible success yeah and are about and are about and are about building i don't know what was going on there so it's funny i watch brandon and i always want to not like this guy they really casted him well okay because he's really likable he's really a likable guy and uh, I don't think he's overly experienced. I've seen a little bit of stuff he's bought. It sounds like he's been doing it for maybe 10 years or so. And uh, But I got to say, they really cast this guy well because he's, he's hard not to like. And really, the message is good. Everything I don't have any argument with any of the points he said. I don't know about taking out so many people to eat and that sort of thing. But the bottom line is you got to want it, right? You got to want it. And I can tell you, I wanted it early. I was, I was reading, real estate, reading real estate books when I was younger. I had a... a kind of a stepdad to me, uh, it was my mom's boyfriend and he would, he liked Dave Del Dotto, uh, Albert Lowry, uh, God, there's another guy. Uh, there's so many of them, but these guys used to do seminars where you go there and you watch them and it'd be like free seminar. But the, the, the whole deal was to get you to buy their books and they had books for like 10 to 35 bucks. And isn't that, they have five books and you'd buy all five books for, you know, $25 or whatever. It, it was not at the level of theft that it is at today. It was just wasn't near as expensive and it was not drift with fraud like it is today and really hard selling. And, uh, you know, th when you see somebody making a pitch and they're just trying to get you to go to the links below and that's, they're just throwing you to the alligators. They're going to get your phone number and then the hard sales people are going to hit you. And a lot of people don't have the strength or the, you know, they, they're easily conned, you know, it, it's just sad they, you know, I say the masses are the asses and it's kind of a harsh reality, but that's the truth. That's the truth. And like uh, Jay Black here just said, uh, some people, uh, take courses all their life. Yeah. There's like professional students okay and you know and that's I know we I got some of those people that have signed up with me too they're professional students and I understand greater education and want to do it and but you at some point it's time to jump out of the nest and you know and and start doing things and I tell people all the time you you know I I've been doing it since I was 19 years old bought my first property and you know and that's what opened my eyes uh, you know then I was just boom I was you know, you guys know the story. A lot of you have my book. They're even watching right now. If you don't have my book, get my book. Uh, wake up and smell the real estate. It's right here. It's been a number one seller on uh, Amazon and uh, Kindle. And uh, it it uh, it's 10 bucks, 20 bucks in paperback. And, you know, if you're going to get ripped off, get ripped off from me for 20 bucks, okay? It's a great way to get your, you know, get your, your feet wet in real estate uh, and really learn from someone that's really done it. I mean, I've done deals after deal every single year for 40 years. It's been a very long time, and it's just a lot of experience.
And uh, so, yeah, look here. Yeah, Keith wrote here, there are so many sharks, right? There are so many sharks in the, in the sea. He goes, I went through so many fake gurus that are experts claiming people out of their, oh, yeah, car, I'm sorry, charming people out of their money before, oh, he came across me. Thanks, Keith. Keith's actually one of, in my mentorship. And uh, he knows, he knows, he, he, like I say, and that's one of the, probably the best compliment I get is I get people that take my course and, uh, and I don't even, I'm going to have a course going. I'm going to talk to you guys. Actually, I'm going to do a zoom meeting, Keith and, and everybody else that's in the class and Lou. Hey Lou, glad you're here. Uh, Cause I want to get some feedback from you guys. Uh, and I'll talk about that. Let's go ahead and let's watch the rest of this. And, uh, and if you guys just get in here, uh, please uh, subscribe. I got to keep remembering to hit my subscribe button. I'm not a very good audio video guy, but I do know how to make money in real estate. Uh, so, uh, please hit subscribe and, uh, and, uh, you know, if you're just getting here, just join up, you, you got nothing to lose and you'll, you'll find out. We've got a lot of great group here watching. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate that. And let, let's go ahead and watch the rest of this. In wealth through real estate, 100% free to attend, the advertisement said. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard these ads on the radio, or maybe you've seen ads pop up on your Facebook or on your Instagram feed, or before a YouTube video. So, what's the deal with these? Well, it's a really common and effective way for these real estate investor educators to make a lot of money. I'm Brandon Turner from BiggerPockets.com, and in this video, I'm gonna break open the secret world of real estate education and explain when you shouldn't and when you should maybe pay for real estate education. God, what happened here? All right, so you need to get a thirst for a right. thing. Sign up yeah. who don't have the funds to make a larger purchase, which is what the weekend boot camp is usually about. So you go to the weekend boot camp and then you'll likely learn a little bit more, but more of that event is just focused on the next upsell, usually a 20 or 30 or 50,000, even $100,000 coaching or education platform that they have. And let me tell you, they are really, really good at getting people to pay those kinds of money. That kind of money, those kind of money. Now, is any of this wrong? Well, not necessarily. I know a number of investors who have become successful after paying a hefty amount for coaching and training. But I also know many more who have succeeded wildly without the help of that guru crowd. All right, sorry for the repeat on that. I just uh, somehow bumped it back. But we'll move up here just a little bit. Uh, the bottom line is, you know, and he's got to be careful because he sells education too, so he's not going to knock it totally. But uh, again, you got to do something with the information you get. You don't have to read everything. I always tell people, just start, just start, right? You got to get started. That's the number one thing. I just did a video today on, on uh, Grant Cardone. He's talking about, you know, quitting or, or you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever the thing about quitting or something like that. I don't know. But again, more than worry about quitting, you got to get started before you can quit, right? You got to get started doing something. You got to really get started. So uh, let's, let's watch uh, the rest of this. And I apologize for the repeat stuff. I believe they would have done so without that training. They just have the mindset. Here's the real kicker. Something that might make you a little uncomfortable to hear. You ready for this? I believe most people who pay so, go, uh, but usually they're going backwards. In other words, expensive real estate education is nothing but an so grab a pen and write these six things down. Yep. Number one, sure we already got you through all that. Sorry, guys. Time, Brandon, to do all those things. Now you're getting it. Real estate investing takes work. It takes passion. It takes persistence, and it takes time. You do the things, the six things I just mentioned, and then I'll believe that you've got what it takes to actually succeed. Now, that's not to say coaching and training doesn't have a place in the industry or in your future. Like, look, even Tiger Woods, arguably the best golfer in the world, has a golf coach are plenty of stories of people out there who have paid money to a coach or a paid mentor and found incredible success. Maybe the hand I, I actually don't know that many. Careful. Uh, you know, I, I got to say, when he talks about some of the big gurus, I, I mean, like, and we'll jump over here. If I, if I, if I Google Chris Crone testimonials, meet Kevin testimonials, uh, Grant Cardone testimonials, come up with almost nothing. Okay. Nothing. And, uh, and we'll do it here in a second, right? Uh, that's one of the things. you got to find testimonials. Don't, don't trust anybody. It's like, you know, uh, the guy, Marky, what's his name? The, oh, gosh, Mark Wahlberg, right? Super fit actor, right? He says, I, I'm not going to take let anybody teach me how to get in shape. Uh, and I'm not going to let anybody train me to get in shape that's not in better shape than I am already. And that makes sense. You want somebody that's better than you. That's what you do. You go to them for their qualities that they have that you don't. Let's keep do your homework on the educator and of course check out bigger pockets forums to kind of do some of that research and then don't get caught up in the hype or the promise of secrets there aren't any secrets just hard work passion persistence repeat the point i'm making is this before throwing money at someone else 
in hopes that they're gonna make you successful, understand that success comes from within first. In today's world, and largely thanks to the Bigger Pockets real estate investing community, information has been democratized. In other words, the information you need is out there. It's right for the taking. You don't need to pay 30 grand to some national guru that you'll probably never even meet to tell you how to find real estate deals or how to get funding or how to structure your business, right? So to conclude this video, I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes from the late, great Jim Rohn. I quote him all the time because oh, I love this stuff. Love Jim Rohn. If you really want something, you'll find a way. If not, you'll find an excuse. Now, if you like this video, can you do me a favor? Click that little thumbs up button and, of course, follow us here on the Bigger Pockets channel. For BiggerPockets.com. All right. So uh, I'm a big fan of Jim Rohn, which go ahead and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, Jim Rohn is great. You want motivation, go to Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn, he's been dead probably 10, 12 years. I didn't even discover Jim Rohn until after he died. And, uh, it, you know, I mean, I Tony Robbins, I had his tapes a long time ago. Uh, my mom actually did a fire walk. Uh, he was he did some sort of fire walk thing. You know, and then he's kind of the guru of motivation or is one of them. But, but yeah, Jim Rohn, though, he's really authentic and goes way back. I highly recommend you guys watch him. Uh, and so, look, let's. I got some of my... Some of the people from class in here. Chris is here. Glad you're here, Chris. Lou, Keith. Uh, we don't have Anne Marie got Delta here. Uh, so, anybody got any questions? Anybody want to talk about anything in particular? Otherwise, you know what I'll do? We'll go jump over here too in a minute. I'll, I'll mess with the main screen while you guys are also. Uh, Keith, did you make that deal yet with your boss? Is that going to happen maybe? Uh, anyways, what I thought we'd do, check this out while well, somebody's right, coming to right back here. Let's take a look at this. So, like here on Bigger Pockets, right? Let's go, let's look over here. Chris, this is Chris Crone, okay? And I was actually surprised to see this. Somebody wrote, is Chris Crone, is this mentor full of it or is he legit? Now, this is over on the Bigger Pockets. I don't know. I Googled this and this is what popped up. And, you know, people have varying things they say here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people throwing advice around that don't really know is what it looks like, to be honest. At least here it does. I'll keep looking. Uh, huh. Okay, I'd love to get some actual reviews about Chris Crone. This guy's smart. Yeah, that's what you want. <laughs> he's saying, yeah, he's, he's approaching with caution, right? And that's what you should do. Okay, and this is two years old. These are questions. These are simple. Look at what they charge and go from there. If it's one to three K and you get access to them, maybe it's worth it. Yeah, again, not worth much. Uh, you know, so this guy, okay, this here, sorry I haven't responded, but they told me they want, okay, this is somebody that checked in with Chris Crone. They want uh, $50,000 to invest and $8,000 about to do one deal or 20 K to do unlimited deals. Uh, which to me is crazy. You know, listen, if you got money, you don't need Chris Crohn, okay? You don't need him anyways. I mean, you can get some free information, get it. Get what you can for free. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't like Chris Crohn as an investor. I don't. I think his investor program is terrible for the people. And then I got emails from people saying that they've, you know, uh, they've got into courses that cost twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars, and uh, you know they felt uh, unhappy, and uh, some of them didn't even complete it. And you know it is what it is, uh, but you got to listen to those things. Hey, Greg, glad you're here. So, anyways, let's see what other feedback is here. Uh, gosh, see a lot of time. You know what? I mean, a lot of these guys don't look like they have any investment. They have an interest in real estate, but they, you know, listen, you can't take advice from people that don't, that haven't done anything. I mean, it, it's just a fact, you know, say, Oh yeah, maybe you ought to do it. It's only 20 grand or it's only 10 grand. Well, relative to how much money you have, that can be an enormous waste of money. Uh, Oh, God. Okay, this guy here, he says, a good coach, man, or guru takes years off the learning curve. Now, I can agree with that. Uh, and he's probably, well, it says he's a pro, so he might be one of these guys, too. And that's okay. Look, I mean, I teach people, too. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I, got any, I don't have any problem calling people out or, or throwing suspicion when, I, when they act suspicious. Okay, so here's my reply about Chris Crone. For me, he goes, I don't like... Many of them charging money for stuff, but when I can call or text Chris about my deals and he answers, that's big to me. 
If it wasn't for his training, I wouldn't have done a fix and flip and made 70000 Well, that's a genuine, you know, that's the first time I've said I heard anybody actually. But I, this guy ought to be on Chris Crone's channel, right, if he's legit. If he's legit, you know, I mean, so this guy could even be a shill. You know, you don't know. You know, there's people out there that that uh, that are out there that, that they, they, they have false testimonials and they also, uh, they rip people down without warrant either. So, you know, you don't know. But if I was Chris Crone, I'd, I'd have that guy on my show if that guy's legitimate. Uh, a lot of times people tell me that they, oh, well, I know he's all right. This guy's great. And I said, really? What did he do? Show me the video. Show me the testimonial. And then all of a sudden there's blank. No response. They don't have anything to say. Uh, yeah, your, let's see, your videos and Ben Mala's have been helpful. Thank you. Oh, man, I'm glad. Glad you're making an offer. That's great, Jonathan. Yep. You got to get out there and try. You got to get out there and you got to want it. You just really got to want it. Uh, again, this is funny. Yeah, I have to ask people why. As this guy wrote, first question to always ask is why. Why is he trying to help you? Okay, so what, like I say, with Chris Crone and with Grant Cardone generally, although today is actually the first video I've ever seen of Grant Cardone's where he didn't ask you for your money. What he did is he actually uh, he was thinking about becoming a mentor and, you know, about everything, you know, pretty much. And if you guys get a chance, watch that video. Be sure to like and subscribe that too. And while you're here, like and subscribe this one too. Uh, I got my like and subscribe button. It's kind of handy, but I forget to use it. Uh, so anyways, again, let's look here. Here's Than Merrill. I did a search on Than Merrill. I guess he played football. I don't know. I can tell you, I haven't heard much good about Than Merrill. That is just the truth. It's called Fortune Builders, huh? <laughs> oh, scams galore. <laughs> okay. So look at scams galore. Uh, they're talking about Than Merrill. Uh, here's Trust Pilot. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Trust Pilot. I don't know that that means what it says. You know, you can, anybody can go get a domain name, so you don't know. But I have heard terrible things about Than Merrill, to be quite honest. About his, his, not him personally, but about his, uh, I guess he just probably licensed these guys to use his name. But I, you know, he had to reconsider, I think. But I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I know that people are unhappy that go there, and people feel fleeced and pressured, and that is not a good thing. And he should look into that and, you know, do a YouTube on it, speak to it. Then if that's if that's true, you know, you ought to address it. And if it's not true, you ought to defend it. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Okay, good. Some people making some money here. Glad to hear it. Lucky one. Found a property for sale, just the building, 650000 with 20%. Wow, 21% cap rate. But the land was leased by Metrolink. Don't know about it being leased. What do you think, Tom? Well, I can tell you, I have little experience with that. I was actually looking at buying a property that was on a rail property. In other words, I was buying the building, and it was on the land that belongs to the railroad. Whenever you see a railroad tracks, well, they own a good chunk of land on both sides of that so they can drive cars down both sides of it you know, and have that right of way for the, you know, the crossing guards, what well, goes for, you know, all the way across the country, right? They own, it's not just the tracks. They have quite a bit of space on both sides, enough for a building in a lot of places. When you go down the middle of the city, most of those buildings, in my experience, those buildings that you see that are on both sides of the tracks or near the tracks, they're on, real, they're on railroad property. Well, I had an opportunity to get one of those buildings. In fact, it was like 50,000 bucks. And it's a little unsettling at first when you don't, own the property, but you realize, oh, wait a minute, this is like a hundred year lease. This is cool. You know, that, that's great. In fact, you're actually buying the property for significantly less than you would if you own the property, but you still get to rent it as if you were buying the land underneath it as well, which is really cool. So don't be afraid of that. Take a look at it. It's just math. You got to figure it out, make sure it's okay. But, and it may be okay, but here's the experience. And I didn't actually make the money that I could have made on this. I, did, I let it go. There was actually a guy who was terribly disappointed that I, cause I was there first. I did take it away. And uh, the guy was quite upset. The agents were upset with each other, too. I can't remember the whole deal. But anyways, I, got, I have the rights to buy the property. I ended up letting it go because I ended up buying something else and get, got something different. This is back in my cabinet shop days, by the way. And what happened was this other guy that actually had a little wood shop, he got the building. I think he paid 47000 It was right in there somewhere. Well, right after he bought it, the, the city did an eminent domain thing. They took... They, they wanted to get rid of everything. I guess they had the right to do eminent domain on the railroad, it, not necessarily take their land, but take the use of the land. And so basically the city came in and 
basically gave this guy the money to go buy another 5,000 or 8,000 square foot building. So he paid 50,000 for a building that's on leased property for the next hundred years. And they gave him enough money to go buy another property that was on land that he would actually own. So it turned out to be a really sweet deal for him. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry it wasn't me, but, you know, I was doing pretty well back then anyways. And actually, I, I remember the guy. He's a little bit of a competitor back then, but it didn't matter. He was, he was a small work wood shop, and, uh, you know, it was a nice, nice, and it's always nice when somebody hits a home run at, at any level, you know. Uh, okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, does Manny Koshpin do house flipping? Well, he talked about flipping 24 houses at once. He bought them, held them, and he sold it as a portfolio of 24 houses. So Manny's at a very healthy level. Uh, and I sometimes think about packaging. I don't have 24 houses at once to, to sell necessarily. Uh, they at least aren't in the same area. But uh, I like that idea of, you know, because it'd be convenient. It'd be really nice to buy a chunk of, you know, several properties together if you could at the right price. So I do think about selling some of my stuff sometimes in a portfolio, in a package. Um, but yeah, Manny does in package, you know, and I'm sure he bought one house at a time at some point in his life. Okay, so Jay Black, thinking of shifting to commercial real estate flipping, apartment and office buildings, any advice on resources that you can recommend? Well, yeah, look at, if you don't have my book, get my book, number one, get my book. Uh, but certainly you should look at, uh, I mean, I love apartments. I've owned them. I don't love them as much as I like commercial property and office buildings much better than I like apartments. And the reason is, is because apartments building, you got carpet, you got more toilets, you got more people, you got more problems. Uh, with business, if they have a problem, they go out of business, and they leave. Place is empty, go find the next customer. So I really like that a lot. Uh, you know, like I, you guys know, you know, I've owned apartment builds. I had, you know, a, a, t a toilet backup one time that I think I flooded seven or eight units. Okay. And the, each one was 1200 square feet of carpet and it ended up costing me like 20 something thousand dollars in carpet. Cause once you get that feces and that mess in the carpet, there ain't no cleaning it. Nobody wants that. You got to pull the pad. You got to pull everything, throw it out. Well, I did it. And two weeks later, somebody flushed a towel down the toilet again, plugged it up, and it, it did it to another two or three units. So I really don't like some of that stuff that can happen. Uh, okay, so Lou just wrote here. He goes, Tom, I have taken your advice with Realtors and along with PropStream, which if you guys want PropStream, if you can afford it, it's 97 bucks a month. I do like it. I use it. And you can get a, a, the link, uh, you know, down below. I'm saying links below. When I, I always say, like I said earlier, sometimes the links below means something stinks below. But uh, PropStream is legit. It's a cool little deal. But it's 97 bucks. If you can afford it, do it. If you can't, go go in with a buddy and split it, you know. I let people use my PropStream here and there, uh, you know you know, that are close. Uh, but you know, I don't abuse it. Uh, in fact, I haven't been using as much as I'd like to, but again, it's cool. Uh, it is a cool deal. So let's go back to Lou here. He said, so he's taken my advice, realtors and help with prop stream. No sense paying monthly fee. If you're not going to use it. Oh yeah, there you go. Working on a couple deals. See, he's actually saying he's not, he's, he's with realtors and help. Prop stream, no sense paying monthly fee. Yeah, I agree. Listen, don't buy it if you can't afford it. And that's what I guess Lou's saying. Uh, but yeah, you don't need it. If you're just buying a couple of deals, you really don't need prop stream. I mean, if you're if you're going to amp it up a little bit, I mean, you know, look, I use it, but I mean, I'm a pretty active investor. and uh, But I did... I did without prop stream for all these years before <laughs> I kind of made my own prop stream back in the uh, late eighties. Uh, so let's, let's take a look. What else here? Uh, okay. That was Chris Crone, Than Merrill. Let's see. Than Merrill testimonials. Let's see. Look, let's look at that. Maybe there are some. I don't know. Okay. Here's a guy. Fortune Master Program student testimonial, Than Merrill. That's ten more than 10 years ago. Three-day workshop. This is from Fortune Builder, so I imagine that's going to be pretty positive. Uh, customer reviews. Huh. Okay. I don't know what Trustpilot is. Let's take a look at this real quick. Okay, so this guy gave him one star, but, and, you know, listen, this is what it says. It says, is it 
you or the host who makes dollars on real estate. Pay them a couple of thousand dollars, attend the weekend seminar, hear pep talk uh, throughout, along with only a moderate amount of useful information. In order to get the tools to get started, you'll be asked for anywhere from ten to 50000 bucks. Now, that just stinks to me. You know, I understand a one star on that. He probably couldn't do zero. Uh, then Merrill puts together a top of the line training package with support services that are top notch. Thank you, Than Merrill. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Allison doesn't have a last name, so that one kind of stinks already. Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I don't know, boy. Yeah. There's another one star. I, uh, yeah, these, these really glowing, uh, reviews would mean more if they were actually on video and they actually showed that they made some money and they got something out of it or showed what they paid. And I'm not seeing that here. Full immersion training. I attended over the weekend taught by Bill Hook. It was simply amazing. Well, maybe this is, maybe Bill Hook doesn't have anything to do with it. Maybe this is a plug for Bill Hook within the, within the, uh, Than Merrill program. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyways, I'm not going to read all these. Uh, here, I'll go back to Brandon. That's easier to look at. Uh, okay, so let's go back to who's here. Okay, Jay Black, ordering your book should get here soon. Oh, yeah, get the book. Uh, that's that's an easy one. Uh, yeah, just wait. I wouldn't get the prop stream just yet. Get the book first. You know, just get your feet wet. I mean, maybe you've already you own some things. I think you, you know, but certainly get the book. My book is cheap. Uh, okay, Al, are co-investing scams? Ever since Grant Cardone, a lot of co-investing companies popped up. Seems like foolish to give someone else money to make real estate deals for a turn. Yeah, well, I would agree. The stuff that I've seen structured by uh, Grant Cardone and Chris Crone, as they described it, looks terrible. You basically go in, they, they, you can be their partner. All you got to do is put up the money and some credit, <laughs> and then they'll be a partner on the property that you just bought. Great. And what I didn't like about Chris Crone's last one is he was talking about how amazing it would be to, to buy five. I'm going to try to buy five properties in six months. Like this is a tremendous feat, but by his own claims in the same sentence, practically, he says he, he's bought like 150 properties a year for the last 10 years or whatever it's been. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to struggle to buy five properties in six months, you know, how is it you bought 150 a year? Uh, again, it's easy to buy with other people's money and you can keep the standards of profit very, very low. And the reason you can is because it's other people's money. It's not your money. And so somebody goes in there, throws money that way and they tie it up and they buy something. Even if it's a bad deal, eventually it'll go up to where, okay, now it's worth what we paid for it five years ago. And then five or 10 years later, okay, now it's paid off or nearly paid off. Well, of course there's going to be a profit because it's paid off over a long period of time. Yeah, Lou, I haven't looked at Jerry Norton too closely. Uh, you know, it seems like I did something. Uh, and he was talking about, I don't know, he's the guy who's always got a phone in his hair. You know, you know, watch me make a call. Watch me make a phone call. That's what I gather just from his, his YouTube stuff. Let's just check it out real quick here. I'm not going to get into watching these, but... Uh, oh, I do have some questions for you guys, actually. So Jerry Norton... Only do this. He's always got, watch me wholesale the deal. Uh, again, it looks like he's buying stuff out of state. I don't like it. You don't need to. God, there's, there's, listen, there's bargains everywhere. There's somebody's getting a divorce or dying in your town. Okay, always. So you don't have to go very far to find a deal. It's all right near you. And that's where you want it to be, where you can see it, where you can know what's going on with the economy, with what's going on with just your local economy is important. You can, whole country can be suffering pretty much in the, but in your town, it might be fantastic because of whatever projects are going on. It, it just, it's just how it is. A lot of people move from one you know city to another or one state to another. Uh, Let's see here. Hey, right, be sure to uh, subscribe. Hit that like button. If you're new here, please subscribe. You'll find out we've got a great group here, people that are serious about making money, and they're uh, open to share, and uh, it's really cool. It really is cool. Uh, yeah. Lou, I don't know what you mean. 
You have read his contract. I have not. Are you, I think you're probably talking to somebody else in here. That's okay. Share. We'll take a look at whatever you want to look at. Um, but one of the things you guys know, look, I just held my second mentoring class, and Lou was in the first one, and, and uh, Chris is actually is in this, in this last one. And, you know, look, we've had some great success stories. You've seen Ron and, and uh, Liam. Liam called me, too, actually. He's like, I got a bunch of money. Where am I going to put it? <laughs> so nice problem to have, Liam. Glad glad you had that problem. Glad you, It was yesterday he wrote me, actually texted me. That's the other thing. Uh, when I do a mentorship, guess what? You have access to me. You have access. I have, I have actually people have both my cell phone numbers. Uh, in fact, I'll put one up here. If anybody's got a call, if somebody wants to call in, we can take a question. Uh, let's see. Now, somebody's going to have to call in if I do this. Otherwise, it's going to look foolish. Uh, okay, here you go. There's the number. You can call that number if somebody wants to call in. It appears the phone's working. Yeah, I think we're good. If somebody wants to call in, there's the number. Uh, but, uh, and I'll probably cut it here short pretty quick here, but uh, let's see, Lou. He says, he has his students working and promising $10,000 finder's fees. Yeah. Yeah, well, I did. I do remember looking for testimonials on on him, and I think I saw one video that was a little bit old that had a ten, woman had a $10,000 check, uh, you know, like one of these this big, right? So, uh, again, I don't know. You, know, you, gotta, you guys really just got to do your due diligence to make sure that you're not going to get taken because people get taken all the time but i don't know i I can't i can't say anything bad about i don't know anything bad about him but i haven't looked too closely at him either um and i don't you know i I know he's i remember looking through his stuff and it's like you couldn't figure out what he charges everything was free except for the something something and that required a phone call and that's where people like to close and that's where the hard sales usually come so i have no idea uh because i just don't know but i'll look at him again sometime yeah, Lou, I might do a Q&A Saturday or I might do a Zoom meeting. I'm actually, I'm glad you asked about this. Keep me on point here. So one of the things I'm thinking about doing, because I've already, the, the, the class that I had for everybody, the last two courses, we do, I do a couple informal meetings, get to know people and talk about real estate. Then we go to the class, they get a one hour class, they watch me and instruct. And then after that, we do about two and a half to three and a half hours of Q&A afterwards. Well, all that stuff's been recorded. And, you know, from one, and then, you know, so you've got Q&A from two different classes behind each of those. And, you know, we really, really get into a lot of depth. You can, you can take a lot of questions over two and a half, three and a half hours. And, and we got that times too. Uh, but I'm changing the model of my, of my, uh, of my, uh, of my uh, mentorship now because I think really, I, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, but if a lot of people, about half my students actually weren't there for the live stuff, but they would come back and watch all the questions, the questions that are asked that they're going to ask. A lot of people have the same questions they get answered and other people bring up questions that they would have never thought of. And that's why it, it the, the Q and a is so comprehensive and very, very valuable to the, the students that, that watch, you know, that watch it all. Well, so I may just package it like that, and then I'll do a Zoom, you know, at least every month. Of course, everybody's invited. Everybody that's ever been in a class is invited. But, and then, like I say, we can, you know, and then, of course, the critical phone support, the text that I take, you know, when people need help, I'm always there. I I mean, I want testimonials. I want people to make money. So uh, I try to always be available. Uh, Let's see what else here. Yeah, yeah, q and is usually two plus hours. I had one went four hours and I forgot to record it. That was a killer. It was a, it was a long, long, long Q&A. And, then I, and there was like, what? I go, ah, oh. I, I didn't hit record. I didn't have Chris helping me that day. Not that it's his fault, <laughs> but he, he actually thought about calling me to remind me that day, and I wish he would have, but not his fault. I screwed up. Okay. Okay, let's see, Al here. He goes, I find it hard to find good deals because it's so easy for people to get mortgages. Everybody is buying homes. Do you think the current bubble will pop? No, I don't think it's going to be like that. No, not like 2008. That was a disaster. Um, But, listen, I see people hanging on tight to property right now. They're just kind of froze. They don't know whether to buy or sell. And I, even I'm a little bit that way at the moment. Uh, hey, Jose, glad you're here. Oh, yeah, Jose remembers. He was in that. It was a long Q&A, and then at the end, it's like, oh, God, what did I do? 
anyways, and I hate I hate to have information lost, but uh, again, we we you know it's not the only Q and A we did on that class. We have our forms too. Okay, let's see. Well, anyways, uh, anyways, so anyhow, I'm going to do a Zoom meeting. I will do a Zoom, and uh, maybe we'll even do one tomorrow. Is anybody available like during the day, like in the morning, or is it pretty much after five or six o'clock at night? That's the sweet spot, I imagine, unless it's a Saturday at ten or eleven a.m. Let me get a little poll from you guys here. Tell me what you think. You know, in the evening during the week, or you know, or even during the day. A lot of people work from home. Probably can't take a call or participate if you're at work. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's see here. yeah, it's irrational. To th- it says, it, Al says, is it irrational to think frame houses are junk? No. No, I mean, look, I mean, most brick houses are, you know, they're just brick veneer around a framed house anyways. Uh, so Chris likes evenings. <laughs> he lives like me anytime. Uh, evening is good. That's Kevin. Uh, weekends would be good. You work during the week. Yeah, and that's typical. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I already figured out before. Uh, in the evenings or on the weekends, I get it. Uh, so, I'll, anyhow, I'll do, I'll do a Zoom here. I'm actually I was on my way to Colorado last week, and I got to the airport, and I realized I didn't have my ID. And I got through security because I had clear, and then I got through. I had my son, but I realized I can't rent guns because we're going to go shooting in Colorado. And I couldn't rent a car when I got there because I didn't have my ID. You know, I, I sort about 500 pills a month from my mother who has dementia. So I'm her caretaker. I'm her guardian, I should say. And uh, so I'm going through those. And I left my ID in, in her room. And, of course, I couldn't find it. And it took me a few days to figure it out. But uh, so now I pushed it back a week. I'm leaving Wednesday now. And I'll be back Saturday. Um, but. This Saturday, we could do something, or possibly in the evening that during this week would be good, too. Maybe even tonight, huh? Uh, we do it by the pool. Uh, so, anyways, I guess that's it. Uh, but I'm going to ask you guys some questions in the Zoom meeting. Nothing I want to do, actually, right here, exactly. But, uh, you know, it's kind of nice. we got kind of a brain trust there on the Zoom. You know, we can actually share our deals. And, and uh, you know, in the video we watched earlier, he's talking about doing meetups. And, I, you know, I don't like sharing with everybody in my local community because he's not sharing too much because I don't want to create I don't want to create people that are c- uh, competing with me locally. You know, and I was really paranoid about it when I was younger. Now I got all I can handle. I got all the property I want to manage. And... Uh, you know, I'm slowing down on buying, to be honest. I, I, I decided I'm going to, you know, I'm hoarding the cash from the last several deals that I've made. And I got several deals more to sell. And I'm just going to hang on to that cash. And I need to sink, you know, several hundred thousand dollars into a few different buildings that I have right now in, in the form of new roofs and some different repairs. And so I'm going to do that. I'm just trying to make, I want to get all the rest of the real estate that I own. I want it to last longer than me. In other words, new roofs, new veneers, whatever, everything to make it clean and neat and sound so that I get it all done now. And then that way, by the time I drop dead, you know, it'll be time to redo, but that'll be left to you know, whoever owns it, our kids or, or, or whoever's handling it or owns it. Uh, so that's that's my goal is just try to get most everything problem free and uh, i've got a few things that have uh, you know or, uh, need to yeah getting ready to die exactly yep getting ready to die so it's and believe me there's some relief in that the older you get you're thinking oh my gosh if i die i don't want my assets squandered i don't want the kids to have to deal with this if they're in school you know because you never know when you're gonna go you know and I, i'm sensitive because uh, there's a lot of friends of mine that are dead already and, uh, and, you know, I remember just being a, a young guy, 25 years old, and these guys are dropping dead that are 55 and 60, a heart attack, you know, builders. And, you know, I got high blood pressure, but I take care of it. Of course, I have dementia and, and uh, Alzheimer's in my history, my family history, so I got to be concerned about that. Oh, I see I got an agent actually calling me right now. Uh, I'm not sure what about. Um, but... Uh, 
Uh, and, you know, I got to tell you, the power of text. Text is so amazing. I love text. You know, I, I manage all my properties with text. Everybody knows. You call me, you're going to get a message saying, text me because I don't answer the phone. And it makes people just get to the damn point. And they only list about the only, the, you know, if somebody gets in there and you get them on the phone, they're going to tell you everything that's wrong. Or they're going to tell you, you know, they're going to go into things that don't matter. But you, you go to limit it to text. I mean, here, the air conditioner doesn't work. We're hot. Number one, <laughs> you know what? Okay. And that's the main thing you're going to hear about is, is whatever the big, big, big thing is. And so it gets you nice, pri- it keeps it prioritized. Where do you store your money? Yeah, I don't worry about interest. I make my money when I buy property. So just having it available is, is, is fine. Just knowing that uh, I can write a check and uh, that's what I do. I just put it in the bank and I don't really worry about the interest. And I usually keep myself broke, to be honest. It's very unusual for me to hoard cash like I am now. But uh, uh, that's, that's what I'm getting ready to do. You know, and it's not because I think there's going to be a big bust or anything else. I th- see people holding tight, but it's just because it's an option, and that's, that's where I'm at right now. But once I get everything fine-tuned and, you know, just super tight and good roofs and just make everything as nice as it can possibly be, you know, I have a fair amount of money coming in every month, so I usually have to buy something just to, you know what I mean, just from the, the rental income. I, I, I can reinvest, you know, I buy a house probably every three months, and uh, uh, that's what I want to do is just sit tight and uh, it's just a different, you know, it's just different. And to be honest, all that cash in the bank feels good. And I have a buddy of mine who, who's, he's only bought one building and he's actually bought it because of my influence. And he's really happy with the purchase that he made, bought a really, really nice deal. And, and, uh, he wasn't af- affected by the pandemic at all because, uh, because he bought a, uh, what are they, a dialysis. He, he has a dialysis firm. So, you, you know, dialysis essentially, right? You don't have dialysis, you're going to die. So they didn't even know there was a crisis. He's like, is everything okay? And they're like, what, what do you mean? Something wrong? <laughs> yeah, he, they weren't affected by it at all. Uh, all right, so let's see. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I don't, <laughs> yeah, Nope. No, I, I, you know, like I say, I, I rarely have money. I mean, what I do is because I reinvest it all the time. and uh, But right now, it's a little bit different. I'm going to be throwing all my money back into repairs and, and just take care of that stuff that's been put off too long. And uh, and then I'll buy again. But I'll, I'll, I'll just wait through the election. I'll just start in January again. And that that's what works for me, I think, right now. But, hey... So I'll keep you guys posted. I'll put something in the form or I'll email you guys or we'll just talk about it here. I'll announce it in advance. Uh, please, you get a chance. Please, uh, again, please subscribe. If you're new here, you know, you just you, you'll find out. We've got a good group here. A lot of people smart and serious about making money. You know, people wonder why sometimes why I'll do a, a video on Meet Kevin or, or these other guys. Well, it's because about 5% of that crowd that watches, 5% or maybe 10%, guess what? They're really serious about making money and they're looking for somebody like me and, and this channel and the, the group. And uh, so they sign on. And so it's pretty cool. So uh, anyhow, watch that Grant Cardone one if you, if you feel like it. And uh, otherwise, look, I'll talk to you guys soon. And I uh, appreciate you hanging out with me. <laughs>